In the 2010 election, the freshman class has the highest percentage of pro-life members ever in history, and my job was to maximize their winning. And the fact is, we won a, a huge victory in 2010 with the largest number of pro-life members ever elected in a freshman class. All right, let's move on. Let's take another question. Congressman, I'll bring you in on this one. Let's, let's take a question now from social media. Question. Before we move on, you want in on this issue? They want you in on this issue. Would you like in on this issue? But John, once again, it's a medical subject, and I'm a doctor, you know. <laughs> no, I, I do want to make a couple comments, because I can remember the very early years studying obstetrics, and I was told, and it was before the age of abortion, and I was told, taking care of a woman that's pregnant, you have two patients. And I think that's, that solves a lot of the problem about, you know, when life begins and all. But I also experienced a time uh, later on in my training in the 1960s when the culture was changing. The Vietnam War was going on, the drugs were there, and pornography came in, and abortion became prevalent even though it was illegal. So the morality of the country changed, but then the law followed up. When the morality changed, it will reflect on the laws. The, the law is very important. We should have these laws, but law will not correct the basic problem, and that's the morality uh, of the people that we must do. Now, just very, very briefly, I want to talk a little bit about that funding, because the, the flaw there is if you, if you send funding out and you say, well, you can have it for birth control but not for abortion, all funds are fungible. Even funds that go to any hospital, if you say, well, it's not for uh, birth control and, and it's not for Planned Parenthood, it's not for abortion, if you send it to the hospital, they can still use that money. This is an indictment of government-run medicine because you never can sort that all out. You need the government out of that business or you will always argue over who's paying what bills. Uh, very quickly, Senator. I think that, that was directed at me, and so I, I would just say this. Uh, Congressman Paul has a national right to life voting record of 50%, which is pretty much what Harry Reid's national right to life voting record is. So for, uh, to, to go out and say that, you know, you're someone who stands up for the right to life, you repeatedly vote against bills on a federal level to promote the right to life, and you, you say that this is an individual personal decision or state decision, life should be protected, and you should have the willingness to stand up on a federal level on any level of government and protect what our constitu excuse me, what our declaration protects, which is the right of our creator to life, and that is a federal issue, not a state issue. Quickly, sir. Well, just, just for the record, I wasn't even thinking about you when I was giving my statement, so you are overly sensitive. <laughs> but it, but it is true that we have a disagreement on how we approach it. I follow what my understanding is of the Constitution, and it, it does allow for the states to deal with difficult problems. Matter of fact, it allows the states to deal with almost all the problems if you look at it. It is not given, these powers aren't given to the Congress. I right. see abortion as a violent act. All other violence is handled by the states. Murder, burglary, violence, is, that's a state issue. So don't try to say that I'm less pro-life because I want to be particular about the way we do it and allow the states the prerogative. This is the solution. This is the solution because if we would allow the states to write their laws, take away the jurisdiction by a majority vote in the Congress, you repeal Roe versus Wade overnight instead of waiting year after year to change the court system. All right, we need to take one more break.